Welcome to the Tap Haven Podcast, episode 14. I'm here. here. Hey. You're here. You're here. We made it. Oh, man. Oh, okay. God. Welcome, audience. We are recording in a new software, so this should be super fun. You should have higher quality video and audio, and everything should look pretty. What? How are y'all doing this week? Good. Anthony, what have you been up to? Just looking good, man. Just looking good. I like um, it. <laughs> all right. So my backup recording, not going to exist because it is dropping millions of frames right now. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> this past week, uh, we almost double died on our way back from Asheville, which double was exciting. Died. We definitely would have double died for something pretty awesome which I'll get to in a second. But, you know, I live in the mountains, which have windy roads, and we're coming up on a windy bit, And but we're on the straightaway. We're, we're like on a nice long straight up to the windy bit. Two okay. vehicles, like a minivan and a truck, come out of the turn, out of the bend. Okay, whatever. They're coming onto the straightaway. They're now on the straightaway, yet they drift into our lane a lot. They, they, they didn't... Sh they, they're just... They're just doing it. I I honk, I swerve, heart attack ensues, and then the truck behind them, not one to two seconds later, does the exact same thing. They Listen both that patch of road. Yeah. And I was just like, Weird. we almost double died. And we almost double died for well actually we went there for Home Depot. But Home Depot while we were while we were there, Ash found like a fairly authentic uh, udon and sushi place. I'm frozen, so I'm gonna turn off OBS. The okay, I'm probably not frozen anymore. You're now not Eric's frozen. Anymore. frozen. <laughs> okay, Eric's well, fine. We'll see how everybody this goes. is fine. Never, <laughs> everything's fine. We're good. <laughs> Anyways, um, we almost went to this other sushi place, but it was too American. And, but this udon and sushi was only four minutes from Home Depot, and our server could barely speak English, which is always a good sign. And the only thing bad about it is that udon is very filling and sushi is very filling. <laughs> so when you try to eat both at the same time. Lies. Both of those are lies. <laughs> what? You must have a bird stomach. Sushi <laughs> no. is not Bro. Uh, no, man. No. I'm like the garbage disposal. I eat everything. I eat everyone's food. They have to stop me from finishing. <laughs> that's going to that's gonna be a no there. Bob. My bills for sushi are too high, guys. Like, I got I to gotta be oh, careful. Oh, I when wonder. I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. <laughs> this place was surprisingly good. Like, the sushi was fresh, and I could not believe how big the slices of fish were. I was just like, this is this nice. is nuts. Like, even the salmon and the red tuna, those are just, like, the generic things, were super fatty and melted in your mouth and were just delicious. And I was like, disgusting. Well, no, I need I'm more reasons to go to Home Depot. Here. Get out of here. Here. Not what I would have expected from a Home Depot run, but, but uh, makes sense. But as as Eric and I know, but the audience don't. Nat's been up to a lot. What have oh, you been up to? Yeah, you have. You just got back. Yeah, from wait, some wait awesomeness. a second now. Uh oh, maybe he we didn't were enjoy in the, it. the what do they call it? The 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 big pineapple. What I is that tell place you called? Guys, I didn't tell you big. guys. Any, it's a fruit. About what, the big apple? While we were in New York. Before you go, yeah, dude, dude did you see any really short Vietnamese guys? Because I think Hung was there while you were. No, I would have noticed Legit. if Hung, if I had seen Hung on the street. I know. I'd been like, dude, that's Hung. <laughs> I think y'all might have been there at the same time, though. I just we saw probably were. <laughs> yeah, it's for nuts. like a brief period of time, we were probably were there. Um, yeah. So I was in New York for about three days, and uh, it ended very early. Um, due to no. some family drama. No. Uh, yeah, it was unexpected, but uh, it was very succinct. We left almost immediately after. Um, Southwest, shout out to y'all. You uh, got a call from a very disgruntled uh, set of, of set of people, and we're like, hey, whatever you guys need, here's the ticket. <laughs> Here you go. You, you don't have to be there anymore. So... Uh. Uh, that was awesome in the sense that we were able to bounce right out. Um, I'm a homebody, naturally, uh, just by nature. So I, I got home and I was like, oh, heck yes. This is what I wanted to do for spring break. This is, this is exactly what I wanted. And I got a massage. I got uh, nice. I got adjusted at a chiropractor as well. So like I had a great time. 
Um, let's see. Yeah, that was about it for spring break. That's all we did. You know, since you bring up chiropractor, I got to let the the people know. There's a lot of bad chiropractors out there, but it's if you want to find a good one, the easiest way is called Atlas Orthogonal. And what that means is they had to do a lot more schooling and they actually have to take x-rays and they have to make measurements and they do like precise tuning for each person. They don't use their hands. They use um, air pressure to adjust your vertebrae with this a sounds special sounds very tool. bougie. <laughs> it's very <laughs> bougie. It's just what used to be the standard for chiropractic. Uh-huh. And then people started doing things the easy way because it required just less education. So you could just get out of school and start making money faster. And you don't have to spend as much time with your patients in those methods. With this method, you go to the doctor's office and it's like going to a real doctor because there's a process, you know, there's a waiting room. You're going to be in there with them for at least 15 minutes potentially. And An hour. it's, it's a much, it's just a much more normal doctor experience with that sort of thing. And, and aside from that, the biggest thing is never, never trust a chiropractor that will adjust <laughs> you without getting your x-rays first. Really? Because they need to know exactly what's going on with you. They they can permanently disable you if they don't know there's a on. unique thing going on with you. Mm-hmm. Like even so my uncle was a chiropractor or is a chiropractor. I don't think he he doesn't practice anymore, right? Okay. And one day I went to visit him because I had a slipped disc in my neck as a child that happened while running to the freaking bus, right? And <laughs> nobody believed me. I was like, I can't turn my head to the left. And I'm like Oof. F- filled with tears as a ch- kid. I'm scared to death because I can no longer move my head. I this has never happened before. I can look this way. I can't look that way. As an existence. <laughs> I've been injured my whole life. So, <laughs> but I get to his office and he's like, he's a really good doctor. Um, apparently he was like third in the country for top chiropractors at one point in time. And, and horse people tried to recruit him to adjust their horses. Cause apparently horse chiropractors, people. yeah, they like wanted to pay him like millions of dollars to adjust horses. Um, yeah. So anyways, it, it, it and another thing, like one time, one of our old dogs who's long past, she could barely walk and he felt around and he figured out what was going on with her hip and suddenly was able to adjust her and she could walk again. It was crazy. But even him being a good, really good at chiropractic and he knows that I, he did list orthogonal, uh, I walk into his office and he thinks that I just, you know, am faking being sick and I just want to see my uncle because I haven't seen him in a while or something like that. No, if he, once he took the x-ray, because he's good he took an x-ray mm-hmm. you know the what what is it a cubic function when you graph it it does like a little almost like an s like it comes up from the left goes to the right and goes up mm-hmm. that was my neck in the x-ray oh. at that point in time he was like oh yeah you oh get, you get you need to get jumped um, back over there bud you might want him to stay with me because he might need an adjustment every day <laughs> yes <laughs> and and he and that takes like an adult like maybe a couple of months to heal from, but it took me like two weeks as a, I don't know, like a seven yeah, year old. You're freaking seven. You're still full of stem cells and, and, sp- and spunk. There yeah. it is. But for real, if they don't take x-rays, if they only use their hands, if they just go by feel, that's dangerous. That's okay. Good that is, uh, I should probably get my x-rays done then. Bad. That's a recipe for disaster. Eric, how was your little break, dude? Uh, I didn't have much of a break. Work, oh, work right. has you guys been don't have spring breaks. insane <laughs> uh, the past a week and a half. So, like I've mostly just been working. But I, I will say, fun fun story. We don't. Uh, one of the benefits of co-hosting a an alcohol podcast is that when you decide, you is a strong word. When your wife decides to upgrade your bar. Oh. You no longer have room in your house because 
And and maybe I'll get a, a video of this that I can put in a little short so the audience can see uh, it. Um, I think I every, it. every surface in the house is covered in just alcohol bottles currently <laughs> because uh, we got the new bar, but it needs it's new feet. We're waiting for the feet to come in. It's too big. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Our, our house is a maze. Have you ever mm -hmm. seen Maze Runner? That's like our house right now. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. All of the countertop, it, we have no countertop. There is no countertop. It's just alcohol bottles. Yep. And it's everywhere. Uh, but we have a, a super pretty bar now, courtesy of my wife. And, and so in a few days, we'll have that set up and we'll have a pretty place that can fit all of said alcohol for, for the podcast. And it'll be, it'll be wonderful. But it is hysterical walking into our house right now, actually. Fantastic. Um, can't wait but, to see it <laughs> yes but yeah yeah that's that's really been uh, uh about it i will say i'm i'm skipping ahead uh, a mm -hmm. bit mm -hmm. we finished attack on titan oh oh that wow. was that was the other part of uh, my, my week it was essentially work finishing attack on titan and bar there so what'd y'all think of the end and oh whatnot. man yeah, how about that Spoiler alert, we're about to talk yeah. about a lot, but Spoiler you've had plenty alert. of time to watch it, so I don't think we need to put our fingers well, up. Well, plenty it's of times it's pretty... It's been over. No, it's not been for the anime. Time. It's not been for the years anime. the manga's been over. Uh, yes, yes, the manga's been done for a while. Guys, But the guys, anime just if finished. I've like, watched it by... If I've already watched it, you've had <laughs> enough time. You know, you're like, That's oh. valid. That's valid. <laughs> oh my god. Like, um, I just finally finished Demon Slayer. <laughs> just caught up fully on Demon Slayer. Which was huge. I for the end. I really enjoyed the the ending of it. Of course and you did. Of course. Why? Did. Why? No, 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 explain. Let, let him finish. So no, I, no, I want to know. I genuinely want to know. Cook. I think that Attack on Titan, the non-spoiler description. Before I get into the description of it, I think Attack on Titan is probably one of the most thorough, connected piece of works in the manga anime market as a whole. Now, I'm not saying that that means you'll like it because there's a lot to like and a lot to not like. But the amount mean? the amount of forethought, shadowing, Chekhov's guns, the amount of effort put into each individual piece from the chapter one all the way through to the very end is not really seen in anime anime that just doesn't typically do that it either falls into the camp of there's a story and they run through it and it's short sweet and kind of like to the point and there's not enough time for it to have these reveals and connected tissue pieces or it is one of these longer more thought out stories like a naruto a bleach where the story lives on for so long, like a One Piece, where it has all of these really juicy connected pieces from earlier to later, but it has all of these filler or lost pieces in the story as well. Are Attack you on up Titan. One Piece? I am caught up on One Piece from the from the manga. Yeah, from I am. The manga. So I you're, am fully caught. You're on. You're on the island with yes. us right now yes and, and the thing has happened yes and a and a broadcast is happening yes yeah and you think that there has been no laying of any form of no no, no 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 you're missing the point one piece does that very well i'm okay. not saying oh that. okay okay i'm I was saying like... that you have this story of one piece that has been going on for a thousand plus chapters and they have these pieces from the story that are, are all connected, connected and beautiful yeah. Mm -hmm. But One Piece also has plenty of pieces of different arcs that are dropped storylines. The story has changed. His design and direction as an author has changed in certain parts where different characters are going towards different directions. I'm not saying that's bad right. at all. Right, right, right. I am just saying that Attack on Titan has this nice sweet spot of being this length and being written in such a way that it has these connective pieces in a similar way to these longer form mangas or animes. But it 
doesn't have a lot of fat that it needs to trim either or any f added little bit of fluff really the anime does a little bit but the manga is very streamlined and the anime is close behind it so like yeah go ahead go ahead and go now ahead. i can go to kind of the spoiler things okay so before this, we jump into spoiler things this determined I will say, hold on before you okay. go into because i didn't i didn't know if you had more to go in that okay. but i think you also have the benefit of seeing this all in one piece as a fulfilled story and not really understanding that the move like the entire last two seasons of them stretching those episodes over is years worth of time years worth of time look no, I'm no, with no. You there. Not, not even not even years worth of time. It's filler. It's it's engaging filler, but it's filler. What is filler? There is no the filler in ride, Attack on Titan. The boat ride over? The boat ride happens in the manga. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. I'm saying the fact that it gets dragged out to the point where it there is a season before and a season after the trip is ridiculous. Are you just are you talking about the time skip? From no, I'm not talking about the time skip. I'm talking what, about what part are you talking about? So you so I know we're not going into spoiler t territory yet. So we haven't like we haven't made that time that bookmark yet. Huh? So if I was to say that hey, let's go ahead and talk about spoilers. Yeah, yeah, go for the spoilers. We're spoiling stuff right now. Come back later. The rumbling um, starts. Yes. And they get on the boats to get yeah. over. There's no reason for another season to happen after that. You could keep on going and still have a full season. Right? There's Do no you, there's there's no reason to be to say, "Oh, the 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 final season part 1. The final season chapter 1 ending part 2, whatever." There's no reason to break those things into individual pieces. The only yeah, like they, they were milking for, it forever. They were milking it for production, uh, one for production time because I understand. Yeah, know, I feel like they of, were giving getting mm, production value, and you but, also had, but uh, at the same time, that was calculated to go ahead and make more money on on it on the ending of a of a series. So, Nat, do you know how the animation studios kind of do oh, bids? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I, I know that they were like there was bids for individual seasons, and the chances are whoever won out got the end of the season. Well, so you know the first three seasons of um, done by Mappa, right? Yeah. No. So uh, who was it I that did it. the first one? one it of was Win that did the first one, and then M Mappa. Did the second one or one or the other. But essentially, when they got to the fourth season, mm -hmm. they didn't have the bid for the first uh, animation studio anymore. They had to switch animation studios or they had to delay for like four years because the first animation studio was already booked. Mm -hmm. Right? So they had to switch animation studios. I'm not saying that's good. It's just a nature of the it's Japanese the of the animation game. market. Yeah, yeah. No, don't worry about that. When they got to the last movies... The movies are great. No, I'm not saying that. Uh, so I'm what not I'm saying getting that, at okay, yeah. is that the time was impossible because the same studio that did the last season worked it out. So they got the bid for the last two movies, but literally could not develop them for X amount of time because they had other releases during that time. Then why not? Okay. This is another question. This is another conversation of the economics of it versus the art of it. If we're going to go for full immersion and for you to have this tight story that you now have because it exists versus what we had, which was stopgap after stopgap after stopgap yeah. to get to the end of this animation animated story. Art artistry wise, it should be done full long full through by by one person and reduce the amount of breaking of continuity. Even if it is, even if it is third war, even if it's it is like a breaking of the third of the uh, fourth wall, and it is based in our reality, not in the series's reality. 
Yeah, I still I, think I, that I, has merit. I still I, think that if you're going to have a, actually, if you're going to say that a story is being told beautifully, but also then say that one piece has a bunch of stuff that is just filler and floats around. Of course, I, it's been I think filler is the wrong word for this, though, because none of none of the anime and Attack on Titan is filler. It's filler. No, no, it's it's the, you, what you're saying just for the audience's uh, clarity is that you the the time in between the fourth season and then there's a there's essentially two movies at the end. There's a part one and a part two of the final yeah. chapter in between the fourth season and the first chapter. That first movie is a super long filler amount of time. And then in between that movie and the next one is another super, super long, long filler time. amount of time. I mean, it yeah. took them 12 years to finish from the yeah. beginning, from the first yeah. release. A hundred percent. And this, and that's just insane. It's, I agree time. with that entirely, but I don't, uh, unfortunately for me, I, I experienced it in one thing, but even mm -hmm. if I didn't, even super long stories that I watch and keep up with in real time, I don't think that detracts from the story. I think it just detracts from uh, how the Japanese market works because you have these big production companies mm -hmm. that hire out to animation studios and animation studios don't have any clarity about what they're going to be working on. So they have to take jobs years in advance sometimes mm -hmm. and they don't have the capability sometimes to stay on the same schedule as the production company it's the reason why map map is almost freaking dying right now because they have to maintain the pace they're doing or else they'll lose out on the bids of the series that they already have exactly and uh, i 100 percent agree with what you're saying yeah i don't think it's a good thing for the artistry but i do think it is uh something that we can drink to as being a terrible part of the uh, <laughs> anime market. And with that, <laughs> I have oh, a whiskey just for us. I'm glad you enjoyed so this is, on Titan. I, I did. And we can talk more about it as we I'm enjoy our whiskey. Because there's, there's a bunch to talk about. So we are, we're doing number three from the, our Flaviar uh, year. You can see the box over there. The number three whiskey... That. They can't, they see, can't see it. They can't I think they can. not Well, oh, they'll see it in the recording. Oh, okay, okay. It crops yeah. it for you, but they'll see the full high definition Primo Vision. So this is the Uncle Nearest 1856 Premium Aged Whiskey, which is named after, by the way, uh, uh, the guy who was one, I believe he was the first African American Head Stiller. Oh. Uh, his name was Nathan Green. He was born into slavery and emancipated after the American Civil War. He was the American head stiller for Jack Daniels. Really? Yeah. He is one of the yeah. founders, I believe, if Wikipedia is to be believed, <laughs> of the Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey. And really, yeah, and this the uncle nearest is actually in the nearest green distillery, which is named after Nathan Green. And uncle nearest is his whiskey's namesake. So, where does nearest come from? So, that was his nickname, Nathan Nearest, nearest Green. Oh, now where that nickname actually comes from Dude, from i like, know where it comes from i is. know where it comes from i'm guessing but this guy you know how every guy some not every guy but some guys have like a thing where they like say a phrase over and over again since he he, he was the guy that figured out what how things tasted right he, he would pick the the mix so Dude, he I was a stillist so he would do a lot of the smells and tastings right off of the still if that yeah. is now likely so, he had a large hand in dude, the process after that too but i bet he just used that word a lot he was like this is the this is the nearest this is the <laughs> this is the this is the, this is the nearest this is and nearest. he said that so many times people were like man you're nearest <laughs> that's your name you're nearest now <laughs> and he's like okay whatever nearest, huh? okay <laughs> uncle yeah, nearest over there named uncle nearest and then he probably worked it into every conversation, even when he wasn't working. He was like, 
Yeah. That's the nearest I've ever been to death right there. Now, so, yeah, go ahead. Now, this whiskey is a blended whiskey. From what I could find, some people are complaining that there's not a lot of information about this whiskey. I was able to find some articles that talked about the details of this whiskey. They say it is an 8 to 14 year blended whiskey, but I don't know if that was entirely accurate. So I take that with a grain of salt because there wasn't a lot of information about this whiskey. We know based on the bottle that it is a hundred proof. Mm. We know that it's a blended whiskey and it's made in Tennessee. This whiskey did win a bunch of awards and accolades, including the best American whiskey at the New Orleans World Bourbon Festival, the world's best world whiskeys awards. It got 95 points and 96 points at Ultimate Spirits Challenge and tastings.com. So some people really like this. Sounds like people like it. On the nose, I get a lot of sweet corn. Yeah, th- a lot of it. Dude, yeah. on the nose, all I can say is it's light and gentle. I could see that. It is It is kind of gentle. That it, like I am attributing that to kind of a sweet corn, mm-hmm. but I could 100% see. It is, it's, a, it's a very light, subtle sweetness. It kind of yeah. has a... Uh, oh, yeah, I'm getting the sweetness now. I have a question, Eric. Yeah. When a glass, whenever the whiskey has like a certain amount of legs on it, does that denote anything about the actual mash bill? Oh, is it just going to be more? The tears? Is that more uh, brown sugar? Is that more caramelization? What is that? So the legs will have to do with the viscosity, of course. Are y'all talking and, about the tears? Yes. Y- yes. The tears. legs. Okay. The legs are still the tears. Yes. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've heard them referred to, but I'll, I'll show the camera. But you can kind of see it. There, there are legs and tears going down the glass. I'll get out of the way. But mm. so when you swirl it down, you can kind of see this line. And if you've ever done a wine tasting audience, you, you kind of know what's going on here. It's the same type of thing. You swirl it and you can see it's actually pretty viscous. It kind of stays up and slowly trickles down. Yeah, it's pretty thick. You know, yeah. you just reminded me that uh, Eric did something interesting last week. Don't, I don't you know if drink? He wants don't you? To, uh, God dang it! I don't. I'm like, don't spit. It out. <laughs> I don't know if he was planning why am to. Why uh, podcast, guys? Tease it. Why are we? Why are we doing this? <laughs> if we're not tasting it at the same time, why are we doing it? I don't understand. <laughs> Why am oh, I? Why man. am I pouring my heart out <laughs> to the to the nation? If you won't even do the decency <laughs> of of cheersing, prosting, giving me Matt, any you're form a genius. Of- oh my god, I have to say. So this has happened for many episodes. Y'all have probably seen Nat and I are like, whoa, you already started drinking. He, he's he's quick with it every time. It, Nat, uh-huh. you you got the perfect idea. You need to cheers, man. Okay, then we can all okay. do it. Cheers. My bad. My bad. Cheers to episode Cue. 14. Cheers. Like and subscribe below. Yes. Cue the um the radio silence that you're not supposed to have. And that it has some sweet corn right up front. This is a corn whiskey. I, I just want to put it out there. Mm-hmm. If you've had a corn whiskey, this is it. It tastes like corn with a little bit of oaky wood notes. Mm-hmm. It's a it's little bit a, sweet at front. It's a little, little bit, bit spicy, black peppery. With the no, that's the I think that's the proof, honestly, because I don't really get the well. No, no, that's lasting pepper. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. It has some peppery no, t- notes no. there. I feel. But this is a bog standard whiskey. Yeah, you know, I don't know what's what's changing here, but I've noticed that. I'm starting to describe things very differently than I, I usually try to find out the flavor and the smell of something like y'all do. It's corn. But, but <laughs> I'm not good at that. But for me, the taste is just really good and diverse. Like it didn't hit me right away. And then suddenly there's like a burst of flavor and it was very, it's just very dynamic. It's not, yep. it's not one tone. It's, it's, it's loud, yeah. but it doesn't stay for long. 
Yeah, and I'll yeah. I'll I'll do some of their tasting notes. They so of course this is a flavor art, so they have their own tasting notes. We should be getting, and I'll list them from most prevalent to least prevalent. We should mm -hmm. be getting some caramel. Yeah. Some apple. No. A. Yes. Nutmeg. No. Chard. Yes. Some char. Yes. It should be a little bit earthy, grassy. Yes. yes. It should have some of that clove spices to it. Mm, understand. Which I could actually see. I think if you took some cloves, mixed it with some corn, and then charred it a little bit, you'd have what I'm getting from a flavor profile, I feel. I'm getting a lot of that. I want to know if when they do this, are larger things supposed to be more prevalent? That is because, what yes. my expectation yes. was. Yes. But I, I feel like caramel. it's the inverse. To <laughs> yeah, be fair. exactly. Right? It's the inverse. You think it starts at the closest to the bottle and then goes out? I'm just saying from my perspective, what I am tasting is the closest to the bottle going outwards. Definitely. Like, I am tasting corn forefront right out the gate. I'm getting hay what if on it's... that nose so hard, too. I mm -hmm. could see that some I you know what I it is akin to a cornfield to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's not bad. It's like it's sweet. It's real nice. Yeah. If you were to take a cornfield and you were to grow vanilla bean next door. Like that would be it. That would be it. Like that's what the air smells like. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bet if you were walking wanna... through a cornfield and that cornfield was next door to a vanilla field. That ain't no cornfield, buddy. You <laughs> would have the smell of this whiskey. And now I just want to know if that vanilla no, fields smell like vanilla because there are no vanilla fields. I'm pretty <laughs> sure vanilla is grown as like a plant. So like it's like pretty low to the ground. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody check me. Like a bush, like yeah, like a coffee like bush. A yeah. I know that weird that real vanilla is very expensive. Ooh, that mm -hmm. that reminds me. So, um, my wife got me an espresso machine. Uh, oh, dude, for, they're so dope for my birthday. Yeah. Um, and I've been like getting really into it, dude, to nice. the point where uh, I have like a specific blend and everything. Like, there's a process. It's it's super cool. Like, I'm so, we've been doing I'm that so too. Jazzed. I'm so jazzed. So I just got to the point where I can build enough foam that I can do the latte art as well. So like, we went to a class before and I was like, oh, that's how you're supposed to do it. Okay, cool. And then I tried it at home and it didn't work. So I had to teach myself. So like, this has been like a complete uh, go home and learn like a, a natural i guess skill of the world where like you trying to learn how to do an espresso shot but now also i figured out that there are accessories for this little hobby yes and they are if they are very expensive they are very expensive but i want them and yep. so if i get if i get this job i swear to god i'm gonna i'm gonna get, gonna some, get of some of those little so whiskey them. whisks yeah i'm gonna give me and a the little whisk. tampy thing click you click got oh yeah and then that also, is not the motion i should use for that, that to be no. honest <laughs> mm -mm. Nope. nope and then um uh, the one thing that i'm really looking forward to is the bottomless uh porta filter so dude you, yes they're they usually so cool come with a spigot but like the bottomless lets you see the what the actual extraction looks like or, or at least the initial uh push through looks like so you can kind of oh see God. whether you've actually gotten your um your your tamp down or not so i'm yeah. stoked Dude, I don't know Dude. if you've seen it, but you should start sharing with my wife. She's been posting her latte I've seen art as well. Some is she doing art? Because honestly, I I, I kind of think lattes are bullshit. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cortado. Trying. I'm a cortado man. Like cortado is a fucking amazing. It's I a do time, a man. Brazilian press when I do it. Usually, hmm. I don't know if it, I think it's Brazil that does this. But you take you do the espresso. And you mm -hmm. put a thin layer of brown sugar on the top. That's Brazilian. And then you tamp it down. Do an espresso. Oh, man. You have to do that. with so What kind of sugar do you use? You use light brown sugar. Light brown sugar. Okay. So there's like different. Uh, I know that there's different 
types of poles that use different sugars. But you also don't tamp it with the original coffee. You put it after you've tamped it. Yeah, so, so you don't want to like, tamp it. Yeah, because you, you don't want to it, it, like the the sugar crystals can actually get so close together that it causes it to br- fuse a little bit mm-hmm. if you tamp it, and then it'll break through at the weak points, and it'll yeah. cause an uneven tamp. So yeah. you just want to like loosely sieve, yeah, the brown sugar, whatever. Like turbanine would work well. Demerara is yeah. great. Yeah, um, the Demerara is what I've seen on like most yeah. the es- espresso. Uh, Demerara is stuff amazing. That I've seen on on TikTok. And you just but, uh, layer yeah. it on top. You just like sieve it on top, and it pushes it through, and it's so good. Yeah, you it's treat like, it as like a uh, extra coarse grind that you put on the top for flavoring, which exactly. makes me think like, do you do that with coffee as well? Do you can do you blend coffee that way, where you do like a, a like let's say that you do like a medium to light roast, but you want some of that body that you get from brown, but from a dark roast, but not with the hard uh, caffeine edge. So do you take a really coarse grind of that and put it? over the top to add more body or is that even like a thing i don't know all this to say all this to say cool hobby makes me think about vanilla that's how we got there we're back (laughs) but most importantly have y'all seen the keurig controversy Mm -hmm. oh there's a controversy Keurig came out i'm i'm calling it i haven't I, I'm making it a controversy, okay? <laughs> I don't know. It probably is. <laughs> you are the controversy. So they came out with a video, and it was very Apple-esque about their brand new uh, system. They're not going to be doing pods anymore. They're going to be eco-friendly because they're mm. going to be using these little things that are encased in some sort of a plant-based Container, biodegradable, container. biodegradable okay. fully compostable. compostable. It's going to be amazing. And me and my wife are watching this. We're like, this is great. Yeah, I can't wait. Like, I guess we're just going to replace the insert in ours, right? And it's going to work. No, because you'll have to buy another one. Exactly. You have to buy Duh. an entirely new machine. Duh. And apparently they did this 20 years ago as well when people had reproduced their things so much. Mm-hmm. That they were like, okay, we need to resell everything. And so they're spouting all of this, oh, we're just trying to be greener. And it's mm-hmm. also going to be better cups. Now you can make espresso and all these things. And, and it can be super special, better flavor. Everything's better. Anthony, But Anthony. you need to buy a whole new device. They couldn't Anthony. figure out a way to update your old device. Anthony, it's just two things for me. One, it is <sighs> espresso. Not espresso. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me correct you first the, or, or whatever accent that I'm going for right the. now to of course it's for more money we've yeah. had this conversation no no it's just the, <laughs> yeah, the I, audacity to say that they're trying to be green but then absolutely. not to explain like if they wanted to say absolutely. that then they need to explain why didn't you make it work with the old one Yeah, is there a legitimate engineering reason been, to prevent yeah. it because if They're so, not. then people could get they past no that. To. They have no reason to. Why would they have to go ahead and explain it to a... Because a, it's the right a thing cust- to do. A customer base that does not have the population on their Reddit page to like cause like, an actual fuss about this. There's no oh, way. there's got to be a fuss about it. Oh, there's going to be a fuss. It's just not going to be loud enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. People... Tend, it, marketing tends to trend that way anyways, where mm-hmm. it's... Oh, I can market for something better... Mm-hmm. And making the new product is just easier, mm-hmm. oftentimes, and makes more incoming profits. Yeah, than taking an old product and making it better. Yeah. And this is a trend across all across facets. Everything. Yeah, it's like, oh, can we improve the old one? Yeah, but, but if we in. make a new one, everybody's going to want it because it's exactly. better in some way, mm-hmm. right? And we get the price of the new machine for it too. Yeah. And every board member is going to be like, "Yes, let's go. Let's get you a promotion and let's yeah. go. Let's get go to this Peru, guy in Peru the CEO seat. Let's yeah. get it. You know, let's go. Yeah. And on on one hand, the problem is there's nothing inherently bad about the people that are buying this because people love Keurig. It's quick. It's easy. People mm-hmm. are going to want greener options and better options. This is going to be that. And so the market, the people are going to buy it. Mm-hmm. And therefore, the bottom line is going to be fine. And it's going to continue to encourage 
this type of marketing and this type of ecosystem. profiting. Yeah. yeah, this ecosystem is just going to continue yeah. in that way. Until, and that the bubble, until it's bubble pops. Until it's bubble pops. Because at a certain yeah. point in time, people are going to be very upset about the withholding of what is happening. So they're oh calling them. My. They're calling them K rounds. Yeah, Eric oh and I found no. out that we can do this. Yeah, K rounds. Yeah. No. So I can actually put this up for the audience so y'all can kind of see. And yeah, it won't mess at. with anything. So like me doing this can just be completely. Yeah. New removed. Stream, guys, new recording software is pretty dope. Yeah. So um. Yeah. Hopefully it works out well. New recording yeah. software, guys. We'll but I'm we'll hoping see. it'll work out. But this well. looks. This is dope. Um. Yeah. I. The fact that they are making them into like little uh, pucks that they can um, use in a brand new f- filtration system and a new uh, machine that is apparently going to be able to do espresso all of a sudden, mm-hmm. they, they could have done this years ago. There's no yeah. way that. Yeah. It, but uh, again, I mean, it's, it's dope. It's, all, it's, it's cool. Some, but somebody is planning this the thing from, is, like, from, the very, from yeah. like two generations ago. Somebody's oh, yeah. been like, oh, we're going to hold this because, oh, yeah. you know, eventually we need to come out with another line of coffee machines that people are going to buy and we have to give them a reason to buy it. Well, it's because everyone that's going to buy a Keurig already has one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Ex- exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So now they, they, they need to up their sales. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. The only yeah. new people they're getting is, you know, young people that are getting jobs and finally buying their own. Yeah. 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 Kids who ha- their parents had one and they loved it. Yeah, listeners, get an espresso machine. Yeah, You're, you you, you can know what's do it. hilarious? And there's about no it. excuse anymore you either because there you can get one of the hand pressed Italian fine mm-hmm. steel grade espresso machines that will make your espresso with no moving parts, mm-hmm. all by hand, and it's like hundred and fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. So what is hilarious about this is you see the logo on the top. Yeah. That is essentially a QR code for the machine to read to know how to brew that specific, po- uh, what are they calling this? Pod? No, it's a round. Puck. Round. Puck, yeah. So, you know, there are different thicknesses, different types. So they'll specifically brew it for the right amount of time, the right amount of pressure, whatever. But also, cool. maybe it's impossible for some third party to reproduce because there's some encrypted, like, Oh yeah. Uh pattern in there on the on the on the small scale. You know what I mean? So it's just like potentially Is it actually for, it does it actually scan the top of it? Yeah, it scans the top of it to determine exactly how to brew it. So yeah, that's so stupid. I want to know to reverse engineer the crap out of that. They're going to try, but like is there going to be some like insanely small like who who knows like how small scale how they can get. Doing it. And we'll is there see basically a password you know what i mean where yeah. like like a dvd you can't play uh it's true blu-ray true. can't play uh the old hd whatever you called it right Cause they had different patterns guys this is more reason to just go to your local coffee shop buy a bag of beans get yourself an espresso machine and just like just go to town yeah just, just try it just try it like okay. i i thought an espresso machine was going to be too much maintenance i was dead wrong um, it's actually a, very easy as long as you're being very careful with uh, your general bean distribution, especially your ground. Uh, but yeah, I, I love my machine. I honestly kind of want to see if I can get another one. But this one, like, get a little bit crazier. But that's all for whenever I get like old enough where I have, I make noises when I get out of chairs or something. (laughs) So, um, for those that want to go super cheap though, for the longest time, me and my wife used the, these, I can't remember what they're called. Italian. Yeah. The, uh, um, stove top. something. I have one too. Makers. Yeah. They're really good. They're, they're low bars of pressure. So they only do about 2.7 to like 3.5 bars of pressure, but they are super cheap, super nice. And they give the you mocha a good, pot, yeah. the mocha oh, pot. Oh yeah, it's a mocha pot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can even bring it camping. You know. Yeah, like, super they're, they're, nice. In the last, like, if you get a proper one, it'll last you forever. And yeah. 
they it's one of those things where if you really start getting into it this might be just like people that get into cameras where it's like i have my really cool machine but also every now and then i want to use my mocha pot because <laughs> it's got a different flavor profile or something you know what i mean you will never catch me outside with one of these <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when it looks like this, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty beat. Um, so, nah. uh, yeah, go for it. How do you, how did you feel about this whiskey? What would you what would you pay for it? This was tasty. Um, I had a good time with it. I will say that if I was gonna pay for it, I'd probably pay forty to fifty. Oh. Forty to fifty. Uh, if I was to give it like a defi- definitive number, I'd say probably like. 40 I'd say 45. Okay. Yeah. And what would I'd you rate 40. it? I'd give this a 4. I'd give this a 4. That's pretty that's a pretty respectable rating. That's the same as you gave yeah, the last one. I, I so this is about the same as afraid. the baker's I knew on your he was gonna do on it. your <laughs> I knew he was going to do it. He was going <laughs> to consult the excel sheet, guys. Oh. Uh, just check in just Keeping it open, okay, you know, as okay. they say. Well, yeah, I would give this. Uh, oh, and I have, <laughs> I have thoughts about the last uh, last one we did. I was wrong. <laughs> I was dead wrong. <laughs> I tried that thing afterwards. My dad didn't get any of it. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> He's up in it. This is the first one we are retroactively. <laughs> Nat, what? Come here, Mike. <laughs> what would you pay for the Baker's seven year? One second, bacon, I gotta open up I- the sheet. <laughs> open up the sheet here. Open up the sheet. Let's see it. Let's see it. I pay, All I can remember I pay for is it. me giving it like a good. You pay eighty for it. Okay. 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 Now, 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 what's this rating? What's this rating at? Huh? This rating is it's rating's a five, man. Okay. Okay. Yeah, We're up into a whole five. point. A whole rating point. is a five. I would drink that every day. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> For this though, for the um, for the nearest, uh, I would say, yeah, I'd give it a four. I'd give it a f- yeah. That one's a four, honestly, as a four, because it's got great, it's got a great flavor palette. It's strong enough for you to feel as if you're actually having alcohol. It's got nuance to it. The only thing that's missing is a little bit more oomph. I would probably say that if they could add a little bit of, like, just a little bit of something else um, just to round it out. The hay is a really interesting uh, nose note to pull, but it's a little jarring. I, I People who may have been watching this whenever I first sniffed it may have seen my face. I was like... Mm. I'm so sure about that. Uh, but as I got more into it, th- the other flavors that you get off the nose definitely do take care of this. I would say, for me, I would need a little bit more to make this into a daily driver. Huh? Anthony, what would you pay for it? So, <clears throat> unfortunately, I have something that I got another bottle of. I know this one's empty, but I got another bottle wow. so y'all can try it someday. Wow. But I got this single barrel benchmark, oh, benchmark from the McAfee brothers. And it's $35, guys. $35. And it is so good. Like, this is a easily $35. between a five and a seven. I'm not sure where. Okay. So uh, I'll start off with the rating. I'm only going to give this a four, just like Nat. I agree. Like, it, there's, there's a lot of good things about it, but it's not like anything special mm-hmm. um corn but, is not enough yeah it's just very i don't know standard it's kind of like a standard corn whiskey bourbon i don't know if it's a bourbon um would you call it one dimensional that's my last time interrupting. yeah yeah no, that, yeah. yeah um we we're talking about anyways i'd pay like 30 maybe 30 bucks for it maybe 27 it's I was before I tasted my, you know, little. What do you call this? My sanity ch- check. Yeah, I'll call sanity this my sanity check, check. Your bench, your benchmark. My benchmark, because yeah, like I, I have a really hard time in the moment, like knowing if something, how to compare something to something else that I haven't had recently. Um, 
so yeah, before having that, I was like, oh, this is really good. I like this. This is a, this is great. Uh, but now I'm like, mm, it's good, but not like amazing. I'm not gonna go out of my way. Mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. It's weird. It's been an emotional roller coaster because I, I at first I did think I was like, wow, this is really good, and I still think it is good. Maybe I should give it a five. I don't really know. It's just Would it you comp- drink it not, every it day? Nah. Then it's not a five. Okay, yeah. it's a four. I feel like that's the bare minimum for a five for me at least. I, I, think I do. Day. I like it though. It's just there's better stuff. Yeah, and if I didn't taste the better thing, I wouldn't have. I would. I would have forgotten that, yeah. <laughs> and I would have been like, and "Oh, this is like a six. I, I think that's bucks. reasonable. I think your one to ten scale kind of has to be relational in a lot of ways, because you've had that for that price, whatever that was. That's maybe your daily driver. That's your five point. There's you know? also there's also the whole like thing where oh, I just really need a drink. I've been looking forward to this drink all day, and boom, you drink it. It's just like when you're camping and you're hungry. And that's the best food you've ever had. It's mm-hmm. like, well, maybe this tastes so good because I could not wait to have it. <laughs> yeah. So this one's a very interesting one for me. Anthony's an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This Eric, one's interesting. Eric. So it is definitely a corn whiskey. Yes. It is not bad by any means. No. But... I think, and this may be the first, I was checking my spreadsheet. I think this falls at my three rating perfectly. And That's for a, a three. a bit brutal, but okay. Well, no, 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 no. So the way I, I consider I, I know, it, I, one, I, I, one is like undrinkable. Mm-hmm. Two is like, I, I'm never going out of my way to get this. Like, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, it's not undrinkable, but unless somebody buys it and gives it to me, I'm probably not going to get it myself. Mm -hmm. Three is, I mean, I would pick up and drink this if it were in front of me. I might go buy it. I might have a bottle every now and then because I'm like, oh man, this is uh, named after the first African American head stiller of Uncle Nears. Thing. Like it has a cool story. It's a tasty bourbon. There's nothing bad about it. It is just one dimensional, something that I would love to have on the shelf, but I'm probably, it's not a daily drinker. No. And the biggest problem is that in no way in hell paying (laughs) $60 for this shit. You sound mad. Why are we pricing this at $60? It's $60? It's $60. No. Find someone else to buy your dirty water, man. man at $60, <laughs> you're competing with things like Eagle Rare at 47 That's going to be a no. Right? You're, you're, you're competing with the Sagamore. You're Dude, competing no. At the $60 price point, you, are, you have a wide berth of the market open to you of just fantastic whiskeys. Of all different variety. And at this, once you get to the $45 and up mark, you really have to bring something else to the table besides just corn and oak. Absolutely. And that's not to say those are bad because this isn't a bad whiskey. You, will, you try out this whiskey. It's, it's enjoyable. It's fun. It's just mm. not worth $60. I would not say it's fun. I would say that it is interesting. Fun would be like, let's go ahead and throw a little bit of chocolate on that. Let's go ahead and give it a floral bit. Let's give it something else. Like, Let's give it something yeah. where you're like, oh, that's something I didn't expect. Agreed. This is, this is, a, this is a spirit that okay. f- occupies one lane and sticks to it. I can see. That is entirely valid. Yeah. So... With that said, yeah, I'm I'm giving this a a solid three, mm. and a I really would like to see this priced below the honestly below the thirty five dollar mark. Absolutely, but I could oh. I Someone. could Sorry. live with a forty dollar price mark, mm-hmm. you know. But I really think thirty five 
is where I went to see this, if not below the 35. Didn't I say 35? Or did I say 45? You said uh, 45. I said 45. Dang. I'm bougie. <laughs> <laughs> we need to uh, we need to get on that uh, water dropper train because um, I just discovered, I don't know if you guys ever checked it out, but this there's like a QR code for each one of these uh, tastings. Yeah. And apparently Flaviar has just a little four minute video for every single day oh wow of the advent oh. calendar i don't have to watch Which, it now i do have a water dropper i did water dropper two of our whiskeys so far the joseph yeah. magnus which i i think i talked a little bit about to y'all that that one's a great one to do a water drop to i remember the magnus the I magnus is the blend. cigar blend the really oh, pricey expensive great. one that i think so it's our great. highest rated one it's so good yeah. yeah, well, someone in the comments says that this one is best enjoyed with a few drops of water. And mm. I don't know, I know there might be some complications to prevent us from doing this, but mm. if they do like the Creative Commons license or whatever, perhaps we'd be able to use our new fancy software to like skip to the part of the tasting where the guy's talking about it. Yeah. Um, maybe we're, maybe something worth trying because. One thing I think about is maybe the three of us just don't care for this flavor profile, but other people might absolutely love it. You know, oh, 100%. Like if you're oh, yeah. a corn whiskey person, this is a this great is corn whiskey. This is it's just very one dimensional. You have to like the, the flavor of this style of whiskey. Like and I think really this crew right here, us three, we like our finished whiskeys a lot absolutely yeah this like this guy apparently can taste the caramel (laughs) and maple that means a lot of the whiskeys that we tend to to like (laughs) tend to be finished in a barrel that is not Uh, white american oak so we have american white oak is what all bourbons are aged in a lot of whiskeys are aged in one barrel we and like nowadays, finished, yeah. a lot of the newer barrels. ones, they're starting to finish them in other barrels, like Ruby Ports. You got Sherry's. them finished in wine barrels, sherry Port. casks, right? Mm-hmm. And the thing is, that extra little finishing adds nuances to the flavor, depending on how long they did it, mm-hmm. that don't naturally occur if you just use American White Oak. And I think all three of us, while we all enjoy the base whiskey flavors those little bit of nuances are really what push it up and over the edge for us yeah i'm curious to see what happens to us whenever we hit like a a point where we can actually see the the definitive spikes and dips in our hexagonal uh taste profiles because i would love to eventually like look at like the science of it and be like oh yeah like because i feel like my taste my flavor palette kind of follows where Eric's goes right now but I would love to see where it deviates and where and mine is already different from Anthony's yeah I definitely feel like Anthony is the unique butterfly taster of the group here yes absolutely um however I will say both me and Anthony loved the um a few of them that you did not like true true and that's happened i think three times so far (laughs) that happened that happened on our first tasting when we when we we did the whole thing at the museum and that was like the new riff the new riff the new riff and me we were like like what (laughs) that thing thing still slaps you guys didn't like it no we we, to be fair to it give it a high no, 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 no the thing was we rated it like one one three and, and you rated five. it like one one ten and we were like <laughs> we're like what i had no chill i still have yeah hey, the jump was big oh my god yeah no that's so we are uh, we are quickly running out of the allotted time nat what have you been playing this speed week speed round go Bro, a yes. lot of lots of hell divers too. Lots hell divers too. Hell divers too. I am I am playing too much hell divers too. Uh, <laughs> nah, I got no to the so I got to the point where I got the railgun. 
I think I've talked about this on the on the podcast already, where you I did. got the railgun and then like they nerfed it to oblivion. Yeah, like, my beloved. But I have now realized that there is a new sheriff in town in my heart, and it is the disposable anti tank. Um, oh yeah. Um, God, it's bazooka. Pretty. It's it's yeah, a, it's, it's anti tank. How do you freaking yeah. take the tanks out with it, man? It's the noob tube. So you how do you take it out with a tank? How do you take a tank out with it? I can't figure that not out. Not so the tanks. You have to go ahead and make sure that you are angled uh, to either hit the filters in the back or just like. Oh, yeah, I think it takes be behind two. It. Yeah, or it takes two. No, nah, dude, but, two to the face. It doesn't care. Oh, man, dude, I I don't know how to counter mech right now because so much Stupid. of the major orders are based on uh tyranids so wait uh, did you see what just came out today yeah i saw the ma- the, the major the, order the, there's no way no, the there's new no way. the new enemy oh no the the, the flyers there's flying freaking yeah, bugs no. man oh, wow. yeah no dude I haven't, have I, I haven't played it yet but like i'm not ready <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be nuts i it's gonna That's be crazy. one of those things where uh we don't have it. I don't think we have anything on the ground right now that counters air uh, um, pieces. Other than, like, because they're airborne uh, beasts, maybe it might be easier to use the machine gun and the stalwart because they have so little armor. I have a feeling that that's going to pick up if we need anti air. That being said, there's so much. There's such. A presence on the ground for Helldivers 2 that is a fucking problem. Dude, you have you have chargers, you have bile spewers, you have uh uh what is it? The uh the the the, the other type of bile spewer. You ha- and then my freaking bane of my existence, the hunters, and at higher levels they're pretty much the bile titan and the hunters smash together so like as soon as they tap you you're slowed and the rest of the swarm catches up to you it's a freaking problem dude so like i don't know how they're going to do the air and the the ground uh units because right now if you added one more unit on top of me i don't know how we're gonna counter it i don't see it other other than like other than a new meta for like auto dropping um, support uh, turrets, but it's not looking good, guys. It's not looking yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I'm glad that they um, took our feedback to heart and li- uh, kind of tuned the chargers into being able to at least be dealt with. Because at a certain point in time, I think there was like four chargers. That were on me at one time, and I was like, "There's nothing I can do. Like, I, there's no rail cannon to make this like possible so anymore." I, and I started no bringing the flamethrower. Kill them. The flamethrower kills and them, and then they bring the fire to you, dude. <laughs> you gotta dodge them first. <laughs> you gotta dodge them. Yeah, you gotta dodge them. You want to do that I with four of them? Ball. You want to do? Four I did. Of them? And I then did. A, and then a bile titan coming over the hill, like, hey, like, let let me hang out too. Like, I just I heard that you, guys dude. Were I was out. I was on a I was on a ledge next to a bile titan, and I was able to flame him with my flamethrower. Did Doesn't nothing. Do anything. Did nothing. Do anything. I was like, Does it? like, come on. No, <laughs> Why not not? a little bit. Not even a little bit. So, so yeah, sad. get yourself some of that disposable anti tank because it's primo stuff. I haven't put anything else on my radar yet, but I know that there are some games that are coming out that um, I'm curious about. I don't know them off the top of my head because the whiskey brain. But yeah, right now it's Helldivers 2 because honestly, I can't see any other game topping it for this quarter of the year. Like you, You're going to have to come so really hard. Fair. Wait, pause. I'm not going to say that. Freaks. It, something is going to have to hit really, really hard for to usurp the chokehold that Helldivers Two has on the gaming community right now. Like it dethroned Baldur's Gate for a lot of people that I know. Dude, I mean, it might stick around because the best way I've heard it put forward is is twofold. One, it is an RTS mm-hmm. in which you are a single unit mm-hmm. participating in, and at mm-hmm. the same time, the developers. Are the DM? 
Yep, you have Joel. And it's amazing, <laughs> dude. I love the idea that this is all it's part cool. of an overarching story, too. And then we haven't even gotten... You know what? I'm going to hold off on that because some people who've played Helldivers, one, know that we are not alone. Um, they will also know that uh, there is an entire feature of your weapons that's just not even available right now. I don't know if you guys have played Helldivers to that extent, but there's a there's something. I heard something about a sword. I heard something about a sword. No, no, no sword. <gasps> oh, no I heard that soon we're going to be able to be invisible. That's very possible. You're going to be able to teleport too. That would be cool. That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah, wait. That would be super yeah. dope. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. been really enjoying this game too. That's... Spoiler spoiler warning for anybody who has not played Hell Divers One, but there is an enti- there is an entire piece of the game that's not even included yet, which is weapon parts. Oh, oh cool. That'll be dope. Yeah, and the fact that you're going to be able to, and and they've already teased it. Like I think there was a screenshot for it that was showing like all the parts that they were working on to become implemented into the game so all those complaints that you have about a gun being underpowered or just pretty much just not being meta like the whole breaker yeah. situation if you want your breaker back you're gonna have to work for the parts to make it come back to where it was before and i'm stoked because there's we don't even have all the weapons yet but it's gonna be <laughs> great i'm so excited it's such a great game and i'm so glad that i was part of the beginning of it and now i get to see like the follow-up for it it's it's just it's a dream of a game to be like come to full fruition i'm so glad that the people at arrowhead stuck with what they thought was gonna work and then put out this bomb of a game so good nice it's nuts anthony what have you been playing Dude, so I mean, I've been mostly just playing Hell Divers Two Hell as Divers well. 3. Yeah, man. So I'm just gonna skip to what I'm looking forward to. Which okay, go for it. I'm really looking forward to <laughs> Ashes <laughs> of Creation. Ooh. Um, oh, I think that's what I mean, it's called. Th- Wait, this, this is this game looks insane. I mean, dude, this has been a thing for years. I I never <laughs> what is this expect? It's a it's an MMO. It okay. was. Uh, I believe it was kickstarted years ago. I can't remember. Yeah. So, I mean, it's still an alpha. And yeah. And I mean, it's in such an alpha that you can't even play it right now. Like oh. at, towards the end of the year, they'll have another play test, right? For people yeah. to come in and, and, and participate in. But like there's, does it say it here? There's interesting things where um, basically everything that you do permanently impacts like the world. And there's interesting like spy tech like you can be a spy in a guild and you can sell information there's if you want to move things from like one city to another or something like that you have to take a caravan and if people know that you're going to be moving the goods they could like form a raid to try to ambush you but i i actually wish i could talk more about this yeah but i don't think i'm legally allowed to no, it's been on whatchamacallit, dude. It's been on stream and stuff, like just last month. Yeah, but I think the ones that I was a part of, I I'm NDA'd. That's oh, funny. Well, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have played this game. Let's talk more game. about all Ashes of Creation next time if we can, because yeah, I'd be I know down. we're limited on time. Yeah. The last thing I'm really looking forward to is that a game that we all love and hate is finally about to be released once it comes to PlayStation 5. Um Sea of Thieves is coming out with an insane number of new things. They're coming out with two yeah. new weapons. There's the double barrel shotgun sawed off that's basically a flint lock with two rounds that you could like charge up and shoot at the same time or separately. There's a throwing knife that you can also like stab with and sneak up behind people and like gank them and cause a slow. You're going to be able to throw a bomb. Like uh, there's a throwable, not a bomb, that will summon skeletons to be on your side. So they will fight the enemy on their ship or they will fight the enemy on your ship. There's going to be traps. There's going to be, um, there's already a harpoon. Well, you're going to be able to traverse the harpoon and bounce your way across the line. Uh, if it's too high, you can't do it. Uh, if it's low, you can like slide down it, but you got to balance. They're finally adding um, zip lines like all over the place. Like anywhere where it was annoying to traverse, zip line is their ready to go you know um 
and and they're adding other things like there's a four four cannon shot which is smaller cannon balls but it's like a shotgun from your cannon that doesn't travel very far but when you're close up and personal it will do a bunch of level one holes to your enemy and what it'll be really good at is making them burn through resources because level one holes are quick and easy to heal but they they take as much wood as a level three hole and there's other things that oh my god they're, they're coming out with a wind caller thing which i don't know how you're supposed to get it but you can put wind in your sails even when you're against the wind and it will give you more wind than like more speed than full wind usually gives you so you can catch somebody also you can use it when falling from a high distance to not die like you're an airbender or you can use it to fly some guys off of the side of a mountain to kill them or you can hop in a freaking rowboat and turn it into like a jet and just make the rowboat go really fast like this year they are adding so many things a lot of what i just said is coming out in like april with playstation 5 release and then the rest of it is you know uh q3 q4 and it's just going to be great because their whole focus is to add new things to the sandbox and legitimately when playstation 5 releases it's going to be like the version 1.0 of the game is out and it's finally going to be like where we all really want it. And like at the end of the year, they're going to be coming out with a, a harpoon gun, which you'll shoot it, hit something and be yoinked to it. And it will have some skill based stuff going there. So like mm -hmm. if you're shooting over to another enemy boat and you you're overshooting it, well, if you happen to have that gun equipped, shoot their boat and you didn't miss. And now you get to land on their boat and it's going to be great. They're coming out with uh, more secret, like sneaky stuff where you can like hold onto the side of someone's boat and just like latch on and, and hang onto the side and, and be sneaky. And they're coming out with traps and it's just, it's great. It's going to be good. I'm looking forward to the game being good. And they also finally have a full dedicated team to making the game work. Cause like cool sandbox, but it has issues and mm. those issues need to be fixed mm. for people to enjoy it. I was going to dunk on you, but you seem very excited. So I'm going mean, to let you have it. Cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. I know you, you hate Sea of Thieves, but man, you haven't played it in years. It's you hate on not, it. <laughs> it's not my game. It's just not but my game. You were looking forward to it so much when it was coming out. I Absolutely. think, I think when I it comes out the PlayStation 5, Anthony, you might love it. Don't do this to me. <laughs> don't you do this to me. Don't go down this road. You know you might how it love ends. It. You, you might love it. Ends. It's going to be on your sweet, awesome PlayStation, man. Eric, where you at, dude? What are well, you playing? I'm going to be the tease of the week. Ooh, because I have a game to talk about. Ooh, saucy. And I want to talk about it, and we just don't don't have the time to talk oh, about it this week. shut up, Eric. So <sighs> next week, you'll get to know what I've been playing, that I've been putting all my extra 1 a.m. time into. 1 a.m. time. Dude, this person is amazing. Sleep. Oh my god. It's amazing. I'll uh I'll 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 give you a sneak peek a little bit, oh, a little oh, teaser. A little teaser. My week has been filled with gambling. What is this man up to? Gambling. <laughs> Nobody knows. Gambling. But with that said, I hope y'all have a good one. That is the I end of episode 14. Later, Bye. nerds. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Peace.